I'm Peggy Peck in New Orleans at the American Stroke Association. Vascular dementia is a difficult condition to treat. I'm talking here with Dr. Philip Gorillick from the University of Illinois at Chicago about data reported on a potential treatment for this condition. Dr. Gorillick, can you tell us about findings reported here at the American Stroke Association? Sure, I'll be happy to. Um, Catacel is a somewhat uh, un uncommon condition. Uh, it affects the blood vessels, so you don't get enough blood flow uh, up to the white matter, which are the deep structures underlying the cortex of the brain. And when you get this white matter uh, lack of blood flow, you end up with strokes and uh, impaired white matter, and that leads to cognitive dysfunction. So this particular study is very important because there are tracks that come from deep in the brain that ascend up through the white matter, which is now diseased in catacil, and then these tracks are supposed to feed the cortex to help us with our cognition. So ideally, if we could supplement this uh, area that's been, uh, you know, impaired because of the catacil disease by giving the drug, which was denepazil in this case, we'd be able to improve cognition. So this is an ideal model to look at the use of denepazil in, uh, in this condition, catacil. Now, the patients who entered the study had variable degrees of cognitive impairment. Some of them had more milder forms. Uh, of that what we call vascular cognitive impairment or VCI and some of them had more extreme forms of what we'd call within the spectrum vascular dementia. The unfortunate thing was we did not see an overall improvement in the main outcome measure which was the VEDAS COG scale. It was not positive. There were some sub-studies or some uh, sub-testing within the study that were positive uh, and those were things that had to do with what we call executive function and, and speed of cognitive processing. Some of those subtests were positive, but overall, the VEDAS COG, ADAS COG, and the main outcome measures were not positive. So uh, a, a trial here that did not meet its primary endpoint, but on secondary um, endpoints there were there was more significant more significant benefit. So let's just address that issue, which we which we see sort of frequently lately: trials that don't meet primary endpoints and then have promising signs in secondary endpoints, um, and and how and and often characterized then as as hypothesis generating. Yes. So you find something in a study. It's not the primary outcome, it's a secondary outcome, it's positive, that can be used for hypothesis generation to develop the next study. The only problem is that when regulatory bodies look to approve drugs and create the label for the drugs, if you don't have this rather homogeneous um, result for all of these different outcome endpoints moving in the same direction or the positive signal in the same direction, the regulatory bodies uh, don't always approve those kinds of drugs. Now, you can imagine that if you're only getting improvement in one or two areas of cognition and the rest aren't improving, it may not necessarily help you. And, and this drug was, uh, was tested um, in this population because the drug does have an indication for treatment of, um, of Alzheimer's disease. It's mild Alzheimer's, isn't it, or mild to moderate? Well, actually, now it's been extended, not only mild and moderate patients, but also severe patients. It's, it's been relabeled because they've done studies in more uh, severe patients, such as those in nursing homes, and shown that there is a benefit even in the uh, severe cases. Um, in the vascular dementia patients, however, it's been studied and similar findings have been found where the main primary outcomes have not been necessarily positive, but there have been some sub-study results that have been positive. But again, the signal was not universal or homogeneous across all of these different testing modalities, and so these class of drugs have not been approved for vascular dementia. And this is just another study showing something very similar, unfortunately, but with ideal patients because the subcortical disease that affects the white matter that leads to strokes and thinning of the white matter, which is so critical for our cognitive function and which is cutting off these pathways going up to the cortex, is ideally suited for this, but the study was not positive. So unlikely that we would see a label indication for this drug um, in this population anytime soon. I, I would agree with that statement. It will be very doubtful that regulators would approve this for labeling. Thank you, Dr. Gorillick. I'm Peggy Peck, MedPage Today.